I'm Roger Stone, and you're on The War Room with my colleague Owen Scheuer. Developments out of Las Vegas today uh, really boggle the mind. Clearly, we're still not getting the straight story from the mainstream media or the FBI, but it's not unreasonable to assume that they, too, are still trying to assemble the various elements of exactly what happened in this horrific massacre. Uh, we do know several things. One, that Stephen Paddock, despite the fact that he left no social footprint, no social media, very typical of someone who's either in the mafia or a federal agent, um, seems to have some record of leftist and anti-Trump activism. We here at InfoWars have uh, displayed YouTube videos that show him at an anti-Trump rally and being called Stephen by his first name and responding to it. So as Alex Jones said earlier today, it's either him or his twin brother. Then we have evidence of a second guest in Paddock's room, uh, that due to a room order receipt, which shows a double order ordering meals for two. That's most curious. And then there's a question of when Mr. Paddock actually checked in to the Mandalay Bay. Um, we have the FBI telling us that that happened on the 28th of September 2016, yet a receipt which you can see at the InfoWars website clearly shows that he checked in on the 27th. Why the subterfuge? Why would the government and the mainstream media lie about something so incredibly easy to check? The questions continue to abound. Uh, I do want to take the opportunity to tell you that if you're interested in perhaps the most exciting and improbable election in American history, you can still get your copy of The Making of the President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated an American Revolution, by going to the Infowars.com site. Now, I wrote this book in between the Republican National Convention uh, and uh, the general election, wrapping it up in December and January until I was poisoned uh, and out of the action for several weeks. Uh, but I can tell you that this is the definitive story about how Donald Trump harnessed the new media and the important role that InfoWars played uh, as the tip of the spear. That's why the tech left, Google, Facebook, uh, uh, Yahoo, uh, and others, seek to put the toothpaste back in the tube. That's why they are beginning to manipulate our algorithms. That's why they're using dozens of other computer tricks to cut off off our access to you. So by buying this terrific book, and I am, yes, biased, at the Infowars.com store, <clears throat> you not only help gird us, you help arm us uh, in the fight against uh, censorship uh, and for a free, vibrant, and robust alternative media, but you also get a, an instant classic, uh, in my view, perhaps the single best uh, story of the 2016 election. Certainly better than Devil's Advocate, the book that would have you believe that Stephen K. Bannon is the master strategist behind Donald Trump, when in fact Donald Trump is the master strategist behind Donald Trump. That said, Go to the InfoWars.com store now and get your copy. You'll be glad you did. I'm Roger Stone, and you're on The War Room. Hello, I'm Roger Stone, and you're here at The War Room. There's about 3,100 documents on the John F. Kennedy assassination that are still classified and sealed off from the public. Under the 1992 JFK Records Act, signed into law by President George H.W. Bush, 
the National Archives has to release these documents, the last trove of them at least, on October 26th. Now, the President of the United States, in this case Donald Trump, has the final authority on either releasing the documents or delaying their release for another 25 years. There's a number of interesting files here that scholars are most interested in getting their hands on, including a CIA personality study of Oswald, top secret testimony of CIA officers to congressional committees, transcripts of interrogations with the Soviet defector and Oswald handler, Yuri Nosenko, letters about the case from J. Edgar Hoover, Jacqueline Kennedy, uh, the CIA director Alan Dulles, uh, and also the personal files of Jack Wasserman, the, attor the attorney in New Orleans who represented gangster Carlos Marcello, and then last but not least, the files of E. Howard Hunt, the CIA master spy, Bay of Pigs veteran, Watergate burglar, and the father of my good friend and co-author, St. John Hunt, with whom I wrote The Bush Crime Family, which, by the way, is now available in paperback at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. This week, I joined with Gerald Posner, who is the uh, probably the definitive defender of the incorrect Warren Commission conclusion that Lee Harvey Oswald killed John F. Kennedy and acted alone. But one thing that Posner and I do agree on is the fact that President Trump needs to order the immediate release of all documents pertaining to the Kennedy assassination. I would point out that President Barack Obama uh, had the opportunity to release the CIA documents pertaining to the Bay of Pigs and instead elected only last year to knock those releases back another 25 years. So Gerald Posner and I, polar opposites on the question of who killed John F. Kennedy, as I believe that he was the victim of a plot uh, that included Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson, the Central Intelligence Agency, upset about the Bay of Pigs as well as the Cuban Missile Crisis because they knew uh, in real time that Jack and Bobby Kennedy did not face down the Soviets. They did not face down Nikita Khrushchev. We withdrew our missiles from Turkey and Italy in a secret deal that was concealed from the American people for almost 40 years. And the plot included the mob, who had financed John Kennedy's election and who were being double-crossed by Attorney General Robert Kennedy in an attempt to send Carlos Marcello and Santo Traficante, two major gangsters of the time, uh, out of the country to deport them. Uh, and then, of course, there was...